All right, the death of Stalin, a major event in the history of the Cold War, and an event that's really going to change the way the Soviet Union acts from this point forward. So on March 1st, 1953, Joseph Stalin suffers a stroke after a night of drinking and watching movies. He is found uh, fairly late after suffering the stroke, which results in him having a number of complications, and he is going to die March 5th, 1953. So the man who had ruled Soviet Russia with an iron fist for such a long time, the man that had struck fear into the eyes of the West, is now dead. And we can see this right through here. Now, there is a huge debate going on over that fact that he possibly could have been saved if a number of things went differently. Number one is if he was found earlier, uh, there was a very good possibility that he could have been saved. And number two is if his doctors would have acted faster, there's a potential that he could have been saved. Now, there's a huge debate uh, that one of his major chief aides, Lavrenti Beria, who we're going to be talking about in just a second, uh, kind of just let Stalin die as a way of trying to come to power him itself. So we don't know if that's actually true or not, but there is a lot of debate over what happened when Stalin died and whether or not Stalin could have been saved. Fact of the matter is, though, Stalin is now dead. On March 9th, his body is going to be moved to Red Square, uh, processed through Red Square, and he's going to be interred in the mausoleum next to Vladimir Lenin. Okay, so he would be sitting there up until about the end of the Cold War when they're going to move his body out. Now, uh, it's important to understand, too, is across the USSR at this time, there was going to be mass memorials, mass, like, funerals, as you can see in this photo right here. Uh, and over 100 people are going to die as a result of the crowds pushing in there. Okay, you can see this one right here. Uh, this is a painting of the Tbilisi, Georgia train station uh, from Stalin's native Georgia right through here. But the fact of the matter is there was mass uh, funeral hysteria kind of going on in the USSR at this time. And over 100 people are going to die at that crowd. Now, Stalin is dead. And when Stalin dies, he leaves no clear successor, meaning there is a vacuum for power in the USSR. And there are three men who can possibly come to power that the world and the rest of the USSR is looking at as the next possible leader of the Soviet Union. The first one, the man I've already mentioned before, Lavrenti Beria, is this man right here. Now, he is viewed kind of as the initial favorite to come to power uh, because he is the head of state security. Uh, he controlled the NKVD, which was a group responsible for the Great Purge. He basically works and controls the secret police in the Soviet Union. Um, again, there is some debate on whether or not he just let Stalin die in this way so that he could possibly come to power. Again, we don't know that, but he is one of the possible men who can come to power after Stalin. The second one is Gregory Malenkov, which is right here. Gregory Malenkov is the deputy head of the Soviet ministers. He's going to oversee all military options or operations in the USSR. So he's kind of the military man. We've got Beria, the man with the secret police. We've got Malenkov, the man with the military. And then we've got Nikita Khrushchev. Now Nikita Khrushchev is the head of the Moscow Party administration. He's kind of the communist party man of these uh, three individuals who could possibly come to power uh, after the death of Joseph Stalin. Now, uh, most assumed Beria is going to be the one to come to the lead because he controls the secret police. When you control the secret police, it's really easy to get what you want done. Now, Beria is going to be talking about this. He's going to start a program immediately after the death of Stalin uh, to release political prisoners, which is particularly uh, in interesting in the fact that he was the one putting them in prison just months earlier. Uh, one of these political prisoners he's going to release is actually the wife of Gregory Malenkov, uh, another man who he's vying for power with. He's going to seek reconciliation with Yugoslavia. Remember the Stalin-Tito uh, split? The uh, communist countries had basically just cut off Yugoslavia, called them not true communists. So Beria wants to reconcile with Yugoslavia. Additionally, he views um, East Germany as a dead weight. He wants to get rid of East Germany, and he would like to negotiate with the West for one unified Germany. Now, he's going to return from East Germany on June 26th, and he is going to be charged with espionage, falsification of criminal or criminal cases, abuse of power. He is going to be arrested, and he is going to be sentenced to death. Now, how does this happen? Malenkov and Khrushchev basically buy out his uh, secret police, and they're going to turn him against him. He's got no one on his side. The military is actually called into the city to ensure that nothing goes wrong when he is arrested. He is going to be sentenced to death. And then on December 23rd, 1953, Lavrenti Beria, former head of the Soviet secret police, is executed. 
Now, Malenkov, the different man in charge. Malenkov wants to relax total state control of the science and the arts, create financial incentives for labor force to increase productivity, uh, reduce tax rate for workers, decrease the wages of state bureaucrats, focus Soviet economy on light industry and consumer goods, lower the prices of daily consumption goods, support denuclearization, which is a radical belief. Okay, so Malenkov is a different kind of leader compared to Stalin. Um, he wants to kind of let things go a little bit more. Uh, he's much more engaged in science and the arts, and he would like those to be ruled kind of on their own regular way. Uh, he wants financial incentive for the labor force because he realizes the Soviet economy and the Soviet workers are not as productive as they should be. Uh, so if you give them some form of financial incentive, they're more willing to work. This is very similar to the idea um, of incentive that is present in capitalism. He wants to reduce the rate of taxes for the workers to make their lives a little easier and then reduce the wages of the state bureaucrats. Now, Communist Party officials are not exactly happy with this one, and they're really not going to be liking Malenkov at all. Um, the way he wants to redo the Soviet economy is different than the way Stalin had. Lower prices for daily consumption goods, which is going to be something that a lot of people in the Soviet Union would like, and his belief in nuclear or denuclearization is incredible incredibly radical. Remember, this is 1953. The Soviets just got the atomic bomb about four years earlier. Um, so the thought that they're possibly getting rid of all of these and denuclearization, denuclearizing is a radical, radical belief. And this is a belief that Khrushchev is going to really take away. Uh, so Khrushchev is popular among Communist Party officials. He's going to be opposed to Stalin's isolationism, focused on reforming agricultural policy, and he wanted to expand agriculture to the climactically tough regions of the USSR, which is going to help rid the problem of food shortage because the USSR is having a shortage with food. Yes, the Soviet Union is the largest country in the world. However, a lot of that country is not really good for growing. Okay? It's hard to grow crops in Siberia. It's cold. There's a reason you never get involved in a land war with Russia because winter will come. These climatically tough regions, the regions that are really hard to grow stuff in, Khrushchev wants to expand agriculture into those regions. He wants to be um, really kind of enhancing and increasing the role of the Communist Party. He is more in favor of the bureaucrats. The bureaucrats thus are going to be in favor of him, and he is opposed to Stalin's isolationism. Okay? He wants to kind of take stuff in the opposite direction as Stalin was doing. Now, uh, there is going to be known as the period of collective leadership, which is a time after the arrest, arrest of Leverenti Beria, as you can see right here. Now, there's still going to be a lot of fighting going on behind the scenes. Okay, so we can see in this picture, Khrushchev and Malenkov um, collectively leading the country, but in reality, they are not collectively leading the country. They are fighting behind the scenes for power. Then in September of 1953, Nikita Khrushchev is going to be elected the first secretary of the Communist Party, which is going to increase his power. Now, there were some backroom deals going on for Khrushchev to get that position. However, the fact of the matter is Khrushchev is now the first secretary of the Communist Party, having much more power. On February 8th of 1955, Gregory Malenkov is going to be forced to resign as the head of Soviet administration. He is given a, another job within the Communist Party, a lesser job. Um, and this is really, really significant, especially in communist Russia, because you have a Soviet person who could come to power, removed from power, not by arrest or execution, but by simply moving him to a different job. This is a major, major, major difference when it comes to the Soviet Union. So understand the significance of how uh, Khrushchev got rid of Malenkov. And now at this point, power is clearly in the hands of Nikita Khrushchev, the man, the myth, the legend. That is all for now. Questions, comments, put it down below. Otherwise, good luck.